Well, all the very best to you today, my friend. I really hope you're having a good day. I really hope you're experiencing God's unending and God's unbending grace as you go about your day. If we can pray for you in any way, I hope you know you can put your prayer requests right there in the comment section, and we'll be praying for you and consider it an honor to do so. Today, we're going to discuss three things we lose when we live a godless life. Romans chapter 2 concerns itself with those who, since they have never seen God, assume that there is no God and no life beyond the here and now, no truth beyond the present, no purpose beyond pleasure. They believe that in life there is no divine factor and therefore no concern for the eternal. So they ought to live what the Apostle Paul calls a godless life. In the book of Romans, Paul dedicates teaching early in the epistle to the high price of godlessness. The first thing we lose when we live a godless life is our standard. I remember when I was nine years old, I complimented a friend's model airplane. He curtly replied, I stole it. He could tell I was stunned, and I was, because he asked, Do you think that was wrong? When I told him I did, he answered simply, Well, maybe wrong for you, but it's not wrong for me. I didn't hurt anybody when I stole the plane. I knew the owner. He is rich. I'm not. He can afford another one. I cannot. Now, What do you say to that argument? If you don't believe in life beyond the the rafters, you really have little to say. If there's no ultimate good behind the world, then how do we define good within the world? A godly view of the world, on the other hand, has something to say. Has something to say to my childhood thief. Faith challenges us to answer to a higher standard than personal opinion. You might think it's right. Society might think it's okay. But the God who made you said you shall not steal. And he has the final say. And he wasn't kidding. The second thing we lose with godless living is our sense of purpose. Mind deep enough in every heart, every heart, and you'll find a longing for meaning and a quest for purpose. As surely as a child breathes, he or she will someday wonder, what am I doing here? What is the purpose of my life? But if we do not acknowledge God as creator and ourselves as his creation, we're just flotsam in the universe, right? At best, we're developed animals. At worst, we're rearranged space dust. In the final analysis, secularists have only one answer to the question, what is the meaning of life? Their answer, we don't know. Contrast this, my friend. Contrast this to God's vision for life as recorded in the book of Ephesians. He says, we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to devote ourselves to good deeds for which God has designed us. Ephesians 2 and verse 10, with God in your world, you are not an accident nor an incident. You are a gift to the world, a divine work of art signed by God. We are created in his image to do good deeds. We are significant not because of what we do, but because of whose we are and we are His. Which brings us to the third thing we lose with godless living, and that is our worship. In the message translation of the book of Romans, it says that God, the godless people trade the glory of God who holds the whole world in His hands for any cheap figurines you can buy at any roadside stand. Romans 1 and verse 21. You see, rather than worship the Creator, we often just worship creation. And when we do this, we lose our sense of awe and wonder. 
We get so caught up in how things are made that we lose sight of the one who made them. We learn how storms happen. We map solar systems. We transplant hearts. We measure the depths of the oceans. We send signals to distant planings, planets. But for some, the loss of mystery has led to the loss of majesty. The more we know, the less we believe. I know it's odd, it's backwards, it's strange, don't you think? Knowledge of the workings shouldn't negate wonder. Knowledge should stir wonder. I mean, who, who has more reason to worship than the astronomer who has seen the stars? Who has more reason to worship than a surgeon who has held a beating heart in his hand than the oceanographer who has pondered the depths? The more we know, the more we should be amazed. So today, let's heed Paul's warnings about godlessness. Let's keep our sights set on the creator of the universe. Let's behold His majesty. Let's thank God for His standard, for our unique purpose and assignment, and let's worship. Don't settle for the crumbs of momentary happiness that the world wants to give you. God has prepared you for a feast of lasting joy. Amen. Have a great day.